Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be showing you how I did this eyeshadow look using the Hella palette from Uden's Eye. By the way, this palette is going on sale very soon for the last time, so if you want it, grab it from Uden's Eye website, it's linked below. I am going to be doing this eyeshadow look and I'm also going to be talking about what brushes I use because I had a subscriber request also that I talk about the brushes in my collection and what I use in general. So I'll be talking about what I have, why I have it, and what purpose it serves when I'm applying my eyeshadow. If you are new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love lots of things, one of which is color and one of which is eyeshadow. So I like to combine those two into lots of eyeshadow videos. Every week I upload four or five videos a week at least. This week is going to be, I think, like six because today is a bonus video. If you would like to see that sort of thing, I hope that you'll consider subscribing, liking, and hitting the notification bell before you go so that you don't miss anything new. Now, without further ado, let's get rolling. All right, guys, so this video was requested when I shared a picture of a look I had done. I put it on my community tab and asked if anybody wanted a tutorial, and there was a resounding yes across everybody who responded, except for one person. The one person who responded said she was a little tired of tutorials, but she was interested in what brushes I used. So I'm gonna just go through the brands of brushes that are in my collection, and then as I'm using them, I'm gonna talk about what type of brush I like to use for the job that it's doing. And that's really all I have to say about brushes. I'm not a brush connoisseur. I don't really have a huge selection of brushes and I don't even know which ones are natural or which ones are synthetic. But I'm just gonna talk in general about which brush I use and why and which brands I have. Most of what I have are Morphe brushes. Um, I do have a couple of e.l.f. brushes. And then I have a few random ones. I had bought a set off of Amazon called Anjou, A-N-J-O-U. And that's just, I mean, I think that was a Christmas gift when I first started getting into eyeshadow. I did buy a NYX brush off of Amazon that looks like this. It's just a fluffy blending brush. I bought it when I first started getting into eyeshadow and I wanted a nice fluffy brush for distributing color in a wash of color. So that's what this one is used for. And then I have two others. I have this one from a brand called Japonesque. This is a smudger brush and I got this at an actual makeup store. <laughs> I went to an actual makeup store. <laughs> and then I have these, which I am pretty sure, I have three of these. They're just really fine paintbrushes. Not super, super fine, but they're pretty fine paintbrushes. And I, I might have gotten them off Amazon. I think I got them at a craft store, Michaels or AC Moore, something like that, because I wanted something for liner in the outer corner and glitter as well. So those are the brands that I have in my collection. And now I'm going to start the eye look and talk about brushes as I do the eye look. I already primed my eyes using the Glamlight Icing Primer. I'm gonna take a, an e.l.f. crease brush. This is an e.l.f. blending eye brush. And it's pretty dense and thick, but it's got a slight pinch on one end to make it a bit of a half moon crescent shape. I'm going into the shade Soot, and I'm gonna put this on my outer corner. The reason that I like this brush for this sort of detail work is because of that half moon shape, it helps in the crease right here. Like I can angle the half moon into this half moon of my eye, like the crease of my eye. And it just sort of places down the color without blowing it out too much or without bringing it too high onto the brow bone. So I like the shape for it when I'm just doing this right here. I use a denser brush for this part of the look because I don't want the color to blow out or spread too much. I want it to be a bit more concentrated. And if I use a big fluffy brush, then it blows it out. So I want the color to sort of stay exactly where I'm laying it and not disperse too much. I've color switched this brush, so now it's clean. And I'm just going to take it and touch the very edges of where I laid down the color. So I'm not putting down new color. I'm just sort of softening those edges a little, little bit. Just because that's going to lead me into the next step, which is... Doo -doo, to take a smaller and pinched blending brush, this one you can see is a little bit shorter, it's not as dense, and it's pinched a little bit on both sides, so it's a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna go into two different shades here. I'm gonna grab the shade Wolf and the shade Rebirth. I'm gonna grab them, you know, dipping into both pans a little bit to get a little of each color. If I had to choose one of these colors to be a bit more dominant, I would choose Rebirth because it's a lighter tone. So I might dip into Rebirth last, you know, so that's the first color on the brush when I apply it. So I'm taking this and now I'm putting it right on the edge, overlapping this purple tone. And I'm gonna use this to buff out the purple. Now, this might drown the purple a little bit and that's okay, because I can go back in and deepen it up a smidge more. But this is my transition tone out towards my brow. The reason I'm using this brush for what I'm doing is because 
It's still dense, but it's a tiny bit fluffier. But because it's not too fluffy, again, it's not gonna blow out the color too much. If I had started with a transition tone, one where I wanted the color to be just a wash everywhere, I would have started with uh, something more like one of these. And you can see they're both larger and fluffier. This is the sort of brush that's nice for doing a big wash of color because it's gonna hit a larger area. But I don't want to hit a larger area. For this, I want it to be more controlled. So now I've got this um, murky, I don't know, yellowy brown sort of tone blended out a bit. It's blended out pretty well. You can see a little bit of a line where the soot shade is meeting that tone. And I just want to work at that line a bit because I want it to be smoother and softer. I want it to be a little bit more diffused. So the way to do that is to go back into that um, the mixed color that I use and overlap a little bit more into the purple. There we go. I don't know if you guys saw that, but overlapping a little more into the purple helped cross the colors together a bit and um, make them blend more seamlessly. I can go back into a color and deepen it slightly or add a little bit more pigment or bring in more of the purple tone that got drowned by the brownish colors. But I can add that onto a blended base and that will still end up looking better. So now I'm going back into that original brush that I used and I'm placing more soot down in that space. I'm not nearly as concerned now about blending because it's going on to something that's already blended. It's just a matter of making sure that I don't create new lines. And once the product has been placed down and there's nothing new on my brush, I can take this same brush and cross over onto the brown yellow shade a little bit, just a little bit. So to blend, I was bringing the brown yellow onto the purple and now I'm bringing the purple onto the brown yellow and just working it all together until it's the way that I want it to be. I'm not going to add those shades onto the lower lash line because I have a different plan for that. Now it's time for shimmer. I'm going to take a flat brush. Now this one is much more pinched, much more flat, so it's pinched more tightly and I'm going to go into the shade double-sided. Again, I don't know if these brushes are synthetic or natural hair. I I don't know. I do, however, notice differences in the density of a brush and how it picks up a product. I like to pick up a shimmer with a flat brush like this because I feel like I can paint into the shimmer, spray it, which I've done by the way, and then place it on my lid space. And I feel like it gives me a nice color payoff in a very specific place. Now, if you like your shimmer to be, again, more blown out, more dispersed and diffused, more like sparkle everywhere, then grabbing a fluffier, less dense blending brush or placement brush is going to be the sort of thing you're going to want to do because it will give you sparkle in a much larger area. So this is the shade double sided. This is actually in this look is the first time that I've used the double sided shade all over my lid. Before I think I had used it as an inner corner highlight and a face highlight. I don't think I'd used it ever as a lid shade. It's really pretty though. It's kind of a fiery sort of color because it's got white and pink in it, but it's also got sort of an orange tone. It's a multi-chrome, so it's got a lot of different colors. It's really lovely. And if you want to cut your crease or do a half cut crease, a flat brush like this is also useful for that because it gives you a really thin edge and you can use that thin edge to carve out exactly where your shadow wants to be placed underneath of a cut. So here I've got the shadow all over the lid up to meet the mattes and now I'm going to flip over the brush. You can color switch if you want, whatever. I'm going to grab the shade Venom, which is a bright uh, spring green shimmer and I'm going to spray this one as well. In case you don't know, I spray my shimmers almost all the time. I spray them after I've picked them up on the brush and I use a setting spray, just any old setting spray. I grab the e.l.f. setting spray from the grocery store when I'm getting groceries. The point of spraying the shadow is to help control fallout. It gives you more precision and it gives the metallic a high shine. So if those are the three things you want, then I recommend spraying your shimmers after you've picked them up on the brush. That way you're not getting the, the spray into the pans, you're just getting it onto the brush. Before I had setting spray, I would spray with water and that worked okay because it still helped, I mean, it, it moistened the brush and so it helped control fallout and whatnot. It didn't necessarily give me more of a high shine and it didn't necessarily make the shimmer stick better to the lid, but it did do a couple of those things. So if you don't have setting spray, just spritz with a little water bottle. So this is the shade Venom and I'm gonna place this right where the shimmer meets the mat and just bring in a bit of green because it's pretty and it's fun. And why not? 
So now that's laid down, I want to make sure that I'm blending the double-sided shade into the Venom shade and not having a really clear line where the color is like double-sided Venom mattes. I don't like a clear line of delineation. I like them to sort of work together. And it's really easy to do that with shimmers because the shimmer formula, especially within the same brand, will just slide back and forth a little bit. So I'll take a little bit of Venom and bring it onto double-sided. I'll take a little bit of double-sided and bring it onto Venom until I have a blend that I like. And then I'll go back into my original matte brush and just tap. I don't have new product. I'm just taking whatever happens to be there and also grabbing product off the lid to carry it over and help make this shimmer look a little bit less stark against the matte. So in this case, I'm taking one formula and carrying it onto the other formula back and forth until again, I get it to a point where I'm happy. Now I'll take a small pencil brush. This is Morphe M149. It's just a small pencil brush. I have a couple of these from Morphe and I have a couple of them from the Anjou brand. I'm gonna dip into the shade Hello, which is a light pink matte and run this on my whole lower lash line. I like to use this kind of brush. It's a blending brush, but it's not super dense. I like to use this in the lower lash line area because I feel like it's about the same size as the area that I wanna cover. It's not too big, but it's not as small as a very fine detail brush either. So it gives me a nice spread of color in the, in the smaller, more precise area, but still enough to actually see. And I'm carrying this out to meet my outer colors. You can see I'm sort of working it into this brown yellow tone here. And as usual, I will deepen the outer corner and lighten the inner corner. So to deepen the outer corner, here's where I usually use my smudger brush. Now a smudger brush is a very stubby, very dense brush. It's also pinched and basically it doesn't pick up tons of product. It is really designed, at least in my experience and from what I know, which is rather limited, it's true. It is designed to place down the product and just smudge and buff out the lines in a very small area. So they're perfect for smoky eyes if you wanna do your lower lash line and take a color but not splay it everywhere. Just soften and smear it in a little area. That's what a smudger brush is good for. I like to use a smudger, I'm dipping it into soot. I like to use a smudger to um, to add depth to my outer lower lash lines. So, because what I can do is I can press it right into the lashes. It's placing the color in a very specific area without blowing it out. So I place it by the lashes in the outer corner. You use a smudger brush for shadow, but it also works really well to smudge liner. Say you're doing a smoky eye, you've lined your lower lash line or your upper either way, and the liner is more of a gel or a liquid or whatever kind of liner you have. The smudger brush is dense enough and a little bit rough enough to kind of mess up that line so it's not a fine, precise, detailed line. It's more smudged. That's why it's a smudger brush. And now finally for an inner corner, I sometimes tend to use a few different brushes for the inner corner. Sometimes I'll take a very, very small pencil brush like this. This is really small. This is like half the size of the pencil brush I used for the lower lash line. Sometimes I'll just take um, a very small flat brush like this, which is a smaller version of the flat brush that I used to lay down my shimmer. And sometimes I'll take a larger pencil brush like this, it's still small, but it's larger than the other one. I, hopefully, hopefully you can see that. It's probably twice the size of the one that I just showed you. This is more the type that I would use for an under eye color. And is there anything else? Sometimes I'll use, not often, but sometimes I'll use a larger flat brush like this. This one is not as flat. So it's still pinched on both sides, but it's not as thin. It's a little bit denser and a little bit thicker in general. And it's, uh, it's also got a curve and it's sort of stubby. The reason I use a variety is because let's say I'm laying down, um, a light pastel matte inner corner highlight. Then I might use a larger brush because I don't mind if that shadow gets dispersed over a larger area, it's gonna brighten the whole space. If I'm laying down a shimmer, I would use one of these, a small pencil brush or a small flat brush because I want the shimmer to be placed in a more precise area and not everywhere. So it really depends on my own personal preference, what I'm laying down at the time and how I want it to look. It may also matter if I plan on dragging the inner corner highlight onto the inner lower lash line, because if I'm doing that, I'm gonna want something with more precision. Whereas if I'm just doing a matte inner corner that's gonna fill the whole inner corner area, but not necessarily also carry down, for that I might use a larger brush that can lay down the matte, but not require the precision to bring it down. So for today's look, I'm gonna take, <laughs> I just showed you the wrong end of the brush. <laughs> I'm gonna take a small pencil brush. I'm dipping into the shade Fluorescence. This is a very light, limey, yellow, green shimmer 
and I'm gonna spray it. I'm gonna use this as an inner corner highlight, put it right here. I'm gonna drag it up a little bit onto the upper lash, upper lid space, just a little. And I'm also gonna drag it down into the lower lash line. Again, just a little, not too much. I don't wanna cover the pink in the lower area and I don't wanna cover the double-sided shade in the upper area. I find that this brush is really good. A very small pencil brush is really good for the inner corner. If you want to lay down a shade with precision because there's not much space, it's gonna just go in that tiny little area that it's touching. You can blend it out from there, of course, or you can just leave it. You could do a tiny dot of color at the very inner corner for a little a little detail. You could dip this into a um, like a graphic liner or something, or what are they called? The water activated liners, that's what I meant to say. You could dip this into one of those and just do little spots if you wanted to do, I don't know, a starry sky kind of design or graphics or something. This would be a good brush for that, I think. That's the whole look with shadows. I really don't remember what I used on my waterline. I'm gonna take a light pink. This is ColourPop's shade Fluffy, and I'm gonna run this on the whole waterline. I think this is what I used in that original picture. I do not recall, but I'm gonna put this shade all the way on my waterline because it ties nicely into the pink that I laid down on the lower lash line, and that's the only place in the, in the look where there is pink. So I'll just play off of that a little bit, and that's everything. So. Hopefully that was good information about the brushes and I'm gonna pop off camera, I'll be back in a second to show you guys how it ends up looking. So here's the finished look, you guys. This is how it all turned out. I did a winged eyeliner. I think I mentioned before, I've been changing the way I've been doing my winged eyeliner. I'm doing the downward flick in the inner corner and then I like the upward flick at the end, of course. But um, I've been altering the way I do it slightly because I'm trying to find a winged eyeliner that I like, works for me, and works with my eye shape. So I've been playing around with this eye, um, with this shape. You have to let me know what you think. I've been enjoying it and I think I'm getting better a little bit at doing winged eyeliner. Please let me know in the comments what you think. I am wearing the Tulum palette from BH Cosmetics as a little bit of bronzer or contouring or whatever. I don't have any blush on and then I use the shade Double Sided from the Hella palette as a highlighter on my cheeks here. And then on my lips, I'm wearing the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Peaches and Cream. All of that information is linked down below, as well as the stuff I can find on the brushes that I've used. Now, there were a few more brushes I wanted to talk about very quickly, just different things I found in my collection, which is small, but were different shapes than I had used today. Most of what else is in my collection is just various sizes of blending brushes for various areas, but they all basically just blend out. So it's whether or not you want to blend in a large area with a large blending brush or a small area with a small blending brush. Sometimes I will deepen an outer corner with one of the small pencil brushes that I use for the lower lash line because that gives me concentrated color in a small area. It gives me more control. The other few brushes that are in my collection that I didn't talk about are this one. This is a short and stubby brush. It's a blending brush, so it is a little bit looser, not nearly as dense as, for example, the e.l.f. blending brush that I used for this outer corner today. This one is definitely a little bit more, you can see the powder, it needs to be cleaned. This one is a little bit more loose, a little bit, not much. And this is the sort of brush that I might use. I don't use it often, but I might use if I have a thick or dense sort of creamy shadow. For example, I think I used this when I did the multi-chrome in the Wahala T palette from Juvia's Place because it was a little bit thicker of a shadow. It wasn't quite as powdery and I wanted a dense brush to pick up the pigment and then lay it down. It was a little bit more like a paste. So this is the sort of brush I might use for that. This is an angled brush. This is basically, I think, an eyebrow brush. It's what people use can you see that? It's what people use on an angle to do their eyebrow hairs or also to do an outer corner, a wing, something like that. I have this brush right here, which is just a flat topped precision sort of brush. I use this interchangeably with a smudger brush. It doesn't have the rounded edge and tip that a smudger brush has. This one's just flat and very sharp. Um, but I use it as a smudger brush to deepen the outer corner in the lower lash line or to place, if I wanna place color, along the entire lower lash line at the very, very root of my lashes, just for a thin line of color, I'll use this and I'll just tap the color into place. And finally, there's this little guy right here. Uh, this one is an e.l.f. detail crease brush, actually. It's very fluffy and fan-shaped, but it's not large. It's pretty small. It doesn't even have a lot of hairs in it. It's just a kind of a kind of a loose brush really and I like to use this one if I'm placing a dark color on the lower lash line and then I want to buff that dark color out with something light to help me transition I'll often dip into this brush this one I forgot to mention is also pinched just on one side so you'll get a very slight crescent shape kind of like the one I used in today's outer corner and I will use that I'll turn it so that it's 
angled upwards like a, a little smiley face and that's what I'll use on the lower lash line to just buff out a dark color with a lighter tone. So those are the last brushes in my collection that I don't think I've really touched on. But I hope that that video was helpful to you, my subscriber who asked to learn about my brushes. I'm sorry I can't really give you more information. I don't know a lot about the brush industry. I really just found brushes that were within my price range. So again, anything I can find about what I'm actually using, I will link in the description box. Everything on my face, I will link in the description box. By the way, this palette, this is gonna be a bonus video for this week. This palette, the Hella palette from Udenzai and Aniela Kniekvist, this is on sale for the Black Friday Udenzai sale at 40% off. You cannot stack codes, but at 40% off, it's an amazing palette. It is one of my two favorite Udenzai palettes, and Udenzai is my favorite brand. I love this palette. It is so beautiful. It is amazing quality, beautiful packaging, beautiful color story. If you like these colors, I cannot highly enough recommend that you get this palette. Once it's out of stock, it's gone forever. And Yelika said they only have a few left, so if you want this, grab it because it's going to be gone very soon. Anyway, there you go. That's the whole video. Thank you so much for being with me, for hanging out, for clicking on my channel. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Remember to like and subscribe before you go. And until I see you guys again in my next video, which is probably tomorrow, I think tomorrow. I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Bye.